All right, so first off for this dish, what we need to do is prep the fish. Now, before I go into prepping the fish, it is very crucial that we have different chopping boards for different purposes, okay? One, as you see, I use all the time. This is my general chopping board, which I use for almost anything that it's non-protein. Yeah, my vegetables, my garlic, you know, basically a lot of stuff that you prep yeah, on this chopping board. Now, if you're doing seafood, poultry, you need a separate chopping board. Now, I like to use this low-density polyethylene chopping board from Qware because, first and foremost, it's non-porous. So, when it's non-porous, liquid cannot be absorbed into the chopping board. That way, bacteria will only stay at the surface and it can't sip through the chopping board. It makes it really, really hygienic. Every time you wash it, you know it's clean, it's safe to use. These are used in most or if not all commercial kitchens. Yeah, they have different color coded uh, chopping boards for different purposes like green for vegetables, uh, red for poultry, meat, blue for seafood and so on. Now, of course, in a home setting, it's hard to have like five to six different chopping boards. So I at least recommend three chopping boards that you have at home. One is your general chopping board, which you can cut everything else but poultry and seafood, anything raw. And second is a, like I choose red as a color code for me to know that whenever I need to cut anything that's raw, like meat, any raw protein, I turn to this red chopping board. Yeah, so today I'm cutting fish, it's gonna be on this chopping board. And one more is for fruits, because you also don't want your fruits to start tasting like garlic or onions or ginger or any of that sort. These chopping boards are also reversible, means you can use both sides of the, of the chopping board. And these chopping boards are also SGS tested food grade. So you don't have to worry about anything unsafe going into your food, okay? Okay, now as you can see, we've got this really nice, beautiful sea bass. Now we're gonna go into filleting the sea bass. Grab yourself a kitchen towel. Now when the fish is fresh, there's the layer of slime on it. So you might wanna grab a kitchen towel so that to make sure you don't slip and hurt yourself. Put your knife through above the bone, hold the tail and cut through. There you have a beautiful fillet of sea bass. Seasons this fish with a little bit of salt. This is the bones of the fish or the carcass. And we're gonna deep fry the carcass. Yep. When you deep fry the carcass nice and crisp, you can sort of you know break this off and these parts are actually very, very delicious. A little bit of turmeric powder. Yeah, this is the Malaysian style sweet and sour fish. A lot of their fried fish or fried chicken recipe is first marinated with some salt and turmeric powder to give the fish some nice color. There we go. And we're gonna coat this in a little bit of rice flour. Dust off any excess. And this goes in to hot oil. All right, now once we've got the carcass of the fish nice and crisp, we can proceed to remove it from the oil. Try and stand it up. There we go, beautiful. All right, now with the fillet, run your sharp knife through around the rib cage of the bone and gently remove these bones. Now with this, you can cut the fish, the fillet in half and slice. Now you can use this technique to make sweet and sour fish or any type of fried fish recipe. Season with salt, turmeric powder, mix everything around. You can put the fish in the flour to dredge it or dust it with rice flour. You can use rice flour, you can use uh, corn flour. Make sure your oil is nice and hot and also you've sifted the oil. Be sure to dust off any excess flour. Once you put it in, don't mess around with it too much because fish is very delicate. Yeah? So if you uh, keep, keep stirring it and pushing it around you, it's gonna break apart. So let that crust form and the fish solidify on the outside. 
All right, and so now while we're waiting for the last batch of fish to fry up, yeah, we can start preparing the other ingredients for the sauce. Here I have some shallots and into a pesto and mortar. Okay, ginger into the pesto and mortar as well. Let's check on this fish. Beautiful, nice and crispy. Now we can remove. Here I've got about six cloves of garlic. Here I've got about three stalks of lemongrass. This goes in the pesto and mortar as well. To this, I'm gonna add in a little bit of salt and now we pound. All right, once we, they've got to this sort of coarse paste, this is exactly what we want. We're going in with half of the ginger torch flour into the pesto and mortar. Now the ginger torch flour is very, very fragrant and I didn't add it in too early because um, I didn't want it to be overly crushed. Yep, just brews to release the flavor. And again, the ginger top flour is completely optional. Yeah, if you're not a fan of it, you can omit it entirely. All right, so we've got the fish fried. Um, we've got the sauteing ingredients all prepped up. Now it's time for us to saute them. Heat up your wok, add in some oil, and we're going in with the pounded ingredients. Start to smell that lemongrass, the ginger, garlic, shallot. Now all those aromatics are going to make for a really delicious dish. So we're going to fry this off until they're nice and fragrant and then we're going to add in chili paste. Once you start to smell, yep, and the color starts turning slightly nice and golden, we're going to add in chili paste. Now this is, I'm adding in here about two to three tablespoons worth of chili paste. Now this really depends on your heat tolerance. Um, if you're someone who can take spicy food, then add in a little bit more. If not, you can add in slightly less. And we're gonna have to stir fry this until, in Malay we call pecah minyak. Yeah, until the chili is cooked and the oil splits. All right, so now while this is sauteing away, we can prepare the other condiments. Here today, I'm using some yellow onion. Now this really is up to you. You can wedge them, you can cut them in rings. Yeah, it really is completely up to you. Here I've got some cherry tomatoes. Now once your chili oil starts to split, <coughs> we can go in with the sauces. Here I have chili sauce. So the sweetness, is going to come from this chili sauce. Yeah. And the tartness is going to come from some ketchup. A tablespoon of oyster sauce. Combine everything together. Then we're going to add in some liquid to allow everything to come together. If you don't have cherry tomatoes, you can use regular tomatoes. Again, as far as the condiment goes, you can use whatever you want. Capsicum, pineapple, Okay, now I'm going in with about half cup of water. Bring it to a boil and then we'll add in the onions and tomatoes. Let that simmer away and cook off a little bit. Then we're going in with the fish. Here yeah, I'm going in with about a tablespoon and a half of sugar. Two tablespoons of vinegar. Now you want to cook off the vinegar, so allow it to simmer for about five minutes. Give it a little taste. Nice, you can taste the sour, the sweet the spicy at the back of the throat and all the aromatics going on. A pinch more salt, going going in with the condiments, the tomatoes, the onions. Now we're going in with the fish. Once the fish goes in, toss it around. Beautiful, look at that. Now once the fish is in, turn off the heat and you're ready to serve. You don't want to keep the fish in there for too long because you don't want the fish to turn soggy. Yeah, the fish was nice and crisp. Now we serve. Pick up some nice fresh coriander and sort of place them around. This will contrast beautifully with the spiciness, that sour, sweet flavor. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. And this is the Malaysian style sweet and sour fish. Enjoy. All right, now for the taste test. I say this all the time, but you know, now to eat. Let's go. Mm. 
There's one thing about taking a little bit of time to fillet the fish, slice the fish, fry the fish, and then coat it in sauce. Every individual piece gives you that crunchiness on the outside and an even coating of that beautiful sauce that you've just made compared to just pouring the sauce over the fish. I mean, I'm not saying that it's not good. I'm just saying that this is, yeah, way better. <laughs> This is just absolutely delicious. You get the sweet and sour flavors, but with the heat of the sambal that's at the back of your throat, that's just that nice burning sensation. Plus all the aromas from your ginger, the sarai, the bunga kantan, the shallots, all that in there. That's why I say the Malaysian version of a sweet and sour fish is taking the regular sweet and sour fish and giving it, sort of bringing it to a whole new level. This is absolutely delicious. I hope you give it a try. If you do, please let me know in the comment section down below what you think of it. I hope this content has added value to you. If yes, please do click the like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Ciao guys.